There. All right, now it's recording. I also have to warn you that we're all on wine here. So <laughs> <laughs> That's very good. Did she wake up at me before the recording or after? Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did edit that out. That's totally well, It's all six right, o'clock right. somewhere. Why no clock in Bilbao? I love it. So, do, do, would you like us to start? Will we start around the table here? Yeah, you go ahead and, and start. That's a good idea. Hey, okay, Sarah. I don't. I don't know if they get. Well, let's let's uh, <laughs> let's see how far you can hear. Okay, Dawn Soundcheck. Can you do a can testing one? Yes. Well enough. Yeah. Well enough. Oh so I should adapt just a little bit. So I'm I'm Dawn Foster. I'm director of data science for the Chaos Project. Right. Thank you, Dawn. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Uh, I'm Saeed Chaudhary, director of the Oslo Carnegie Mellon University. Welcome, Saeed. Hi, I am, I am Cindy Bell. Um, I run the OSS working group at CCI Science. Thank Hi, you. I'm Long. I'm the I'm a program manager at the Comcast OSPO. Uh, quickly, what is CCSI or whatever that acronym is? CCI. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Got it. Chan Zuckerberg. Great. I'm Vipul. Uh, I do sustain OSS now. And uh, I'm product lead at Believe It. Great, fantastic. Thank you. Cool. Go on, Tim, you're straight uh, in there. My name is Tiponman. I work at IBM Research on a new community initiative called Open Source Science. It's about accelerating mm -hmm. science in a way to remove open source software. And stuff. Now, <clears throat> hey. You got, got that? Great. Hello. Oh, sorry, we go back back hey. here. Oh, oh, yeah, hello. hello. Hi, I'm Sabjiko. I'm a senior researcher at Vice, which is National Institute. I'm also the chair. Right, of where? Sweden. Rise in Sweden, the research of institutes of Sweden, and research institutes in Sweden, forum. and Open Forum Europe. Great. And I'm uh, Johan Inok. I'm also a researcher at Rise. Johan, thank you, Johan. Oh, and this is Daniel. How are you? See you at the third year. And uh, yeah, part of the Leaders of Commons and K as well. And also a marvelous support in getting us sorted out here today. So thank you, Daniel. <laughs> and hello, everyone. I'm Claire, Claire Dillon. Um, I'm, I'm also, I, I think I know many of you before, but um, also with the University of Galway and Lero's OSPO, which is the Science Foundation, Ireland's um, Research Institution for Software Development. Awesome. Well, it's, it's great to have everybody. Are you at the conference? Is this at the facility, conference facility? It's around the corner. <laughs> uh, okay. around the corner but in a separate room with food <laughs> okay no okay gotcha gotcha okay, uh, well, so those yeah, of us ahead. on zoom who aren't there um mike you want to go first you want me to go first can mike hear me you can't hear mike mike What's mike up? was muted all right so i'm steve jacobs um I started working with this group for about three years ago and under chaos value. I run RIT's open source uh, experiment, both in science and in software called Open at RIT. Um, and this is the first one of these. I'm coming to um, Mike Nolan, who's shown up at several of these and can Currently, be heard as my uh, associate director of Open and RIT. <laughs> so I'll, I'll, I'll like, go. Yeah, go ahead, Matt. <laughs> I'm Matt German Prey. Um, I know most everybody, which is awesome. It's great to have this great crowd here. Um, I'm a professor. Uh, at the University of Nebraska Omaha and one of the co-founders of the Chaos Project and really excited, like I said, just to have this this group working together on this important issue. And I wish I was there having wine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 We wish you're all here. <laughs> I can go next. I'm Elizabeth. For those who don't know me, I'm the Chaos Community Manager. So if you have any questions about Chaos or aren't sure where to find something, I'm your gal. Just ask me. Hit me up on Slack or wherever. So it's good to see everybody. 
And I too wish I had wine with you all as well. So I might, after this meeting, have to go have one. I don't know. <laughs> it is noon. Yeah. I'm Sean Goggins. I'm uh, also one of the co-founders of the project, uh, maintainer for Augur, uh, co-director of the Chaos Project uh, for another year here. And um, just really excited to see this group together. Uh, I've enjoyed my collaborations with the scientific and university communities over the last four years or so. So um, I think I know most of the people in the room. Nice to see you again. Stephen, you're going to have to introduce Mike because he's not. Yeah. OK, so Open at RIT uh, looks at open work across academia, so software, research, hardware, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we were funded by the Sloan Foundation first to help professors open their science projects. Mike Nolan is a graduate of RIT with the minor in open source that we've been teaching for 10 or 12 years, and he has worked um, in the industry, he's worked for the International Rescue Committee uh, before coming to me to work with Open at RIT. He's worked as we have with UNICEF and other NGOs. So, Jen or Yiga? Uh, I'm Jen Culps. I'm just a librarian at. Cornell, and I've just recently started kind of hanging around the project as part of my interest in the way libraries use and produce open source. Hi, everybody. Yeah, yeah. 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 Exactly. We were, we're taking offense at the jokes here. <laughs> amazing, amazing librarian. Hi, everyone. Amiga. Um, I just um, started contributing to the Chaos Project. Um, I am here as a liaison for, you know, the university uh, metrics and all of that. Um, I am an open source contributor. I just, um, one of the most recent things I did was um, participate in the outreach project, which just got concluded. So yes, that's a little bit about me. Nice to meet everybody. Awesome. And, Go ahead, Claire. Sorry, sorry, Matt. I was I was just about to jump in there because to 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 let everyone know that the Chaos Project. Uh, I mean, we we did plan this uh, relatively short notice, but our goal, uh, which I I mentioned earlier, but just for everyone on the call, um, is to introduce folks that may not already be familiar with what's happening with the, with the Chaos um uh, University Working Group to the work that's happened already, and with the hope that you'll be able to a um hopefully contribute your ideas here today, um, but also spread the word about this group, um and hopefully then point people who may be interested in this area to participate in the future. So I suppose it's outside the normal run of um, <coughs> run of the mill type of events, but thank you so much for, for helping us um, put this on everyone in chaos. Yeah, I'd be like, personally, I'd be really curious as to what y'all have been talking about when you're all in person about yeah. university things. I just, I would love to get kind of a sense of that uh helios oh wait no somebody put that in there <laughs> I don't know what you were talking about but anything well, you've been talking about that has been you know like points of connection i'd love to hear about that okay insights from the meeting so far chan i really enjoyed um hearing what tim is doing um, in his mapping open source science and it clicked in my brain that i was like oh so you could really like that too and so i've been enjoying the connections and uh, hearing what people are saying because casual chatter um so uh, Tim, if you want to talk yeah, about sure. your family yeah. yeah. I mean, the reason I was very excited when you pointed me to this. Yeah, uh, oh, just just one minute, Tim. Can everyone hear Tim okay? Because if, if we're gonna, yeah, you can hear okay? Yeah? Okay, go, go. So I was very excited when I uh, got the notice that this is happening. Um, so we've been so open source science. Uh, we've actually worked closely with the Santa Cruz Hospital. And we've met, I think, the whole batch of the first six hospitals, I think almost five of them have met them. And now we're trying to connect with the new hospitals. Um, so that was, that's very cool. And also, yeah, we're, we're trying to do the math of science and 
at some point we also love to show health indicators so that when people like a scientist zooms in their area of interest, they can see the available tools and also can get a sense of what what's the stage they're at, right? So that's why we've been keeping an eye on the uh, chaos, but I was not aware of the uh, so that's you that's like, mm -hmm. the there we go. Very good. Anyone else like to offer any thoughts on the conference so far from the context of academia? There haven't been any academic tracks in, in specifically at the conference. So this is, it's all been side conversations, I would say. For, for, as a, as, yeah. But I was part of the panel this morning, but they're coming out. They're large scale surveys uh, around the source and especially highlighting sort of um, the difference between um, industry, you know, a use of open source and in the public sector. Um, so trying there to make improvements uh, to like how that to the overall um, uh, knowledge around open source and how maybe somebody can feed it to some, some more qualitative uh, research and also applied research. They're always talking about this untapped potential when it comes to the public sector, and I guess, you know, as a user of open source. Um, and I think their, their surveys show that, but I think me as a researcher, it's interesting to then take that into the community. How do we, uh, how do we understand that um, untapped potential? And is there also a way to sort of um, use that information to? So, so that's like the element of research. It's not academic research, but I think actually it still contributes to uh, this uh, growing body of knowledge. Mm -hmm. So, so for those sorry for those of you who weren't there, uh, the report Satchko is referring to is the Linux Foundation report of state of open source in Europe. Um, and I think the, the highlights that they talked about in, in Satchko's great panel earlier, uh, highlights or maybe lowlights were, were the fact that the, <clears throat> the that state or untapped potential in open source is has remained the same since last year. So they're not tapping that potential. Um, and uh, firstly, and then secondly, mostly all of the metrics are very different in that public sector than they are in the corporate sector. So um, I suppose the question as to whether or not how different they would be from the general public sector in academia might be an interesting question for us to to consider at some later point. Johan, do you want to? Um, I, I wasn't, but uh, I was thinking of this, saying something. Um, so I'm currently in the final phases of doing a report for uh, for the Commission on Hospitals in Public Sector. Uh, one of six architectures we've identified um, is the academic hospital. So we've looked specifically at, so the, the report has been narrowed to the European countries. So we've only, thereby only looked at uh, Nero and Trinity College Dublin. So we have done uh, an archetype or a description of how hospitals can be modeled based on those. Um, and so that report will first be published in uh, mid-November at the OSARA Awards, but uh, I will be giving a, a preview uh, a presentation tomorrow. Uh, but it might, it might be really good knowing, and then we will have a couple of this process of also recommendations for the academic uh, part. And uh, I'd be happy to share a, a brief copy of that amongst this group specific because I think it would be valuable to get you in early input as well based on that. So, uh, no, it's, it's not published, but I, I can share with uh, this group for review purposes. Just <laughs> <laughs> Boiler alert and preview special circle excellence. Thank you, Johan. Yeah, sure. Anyone else? No? There we have it. Well, th thanks. I had a, a few comments. I don't, hopefully, you can all hear me okay. Can. Just fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, one is the the LF report that you had mentioned. Is that that's published? Or was that, was there just a preview? Was it a panel? No, that, that one was published today. There were four reports published. And the one that Sachiko referenced was the state of open source in Europe or state of. I, I think I have the okay. link. The Dawn is being very effective and dropping links in the Slack channel as we speak. Thank you. Thank you, Don. Um, it makes me wonder, Don, that maybe we should 
remember how we, we had talked about doing a podcast around the maintainers report that had come out uh, in yeah. the OSPO, in the corp, you can probably see where I'm going with this, that we would do a podcast where we have people from this group kind of reflect on that report and how it might be um, relevant in their particular context and, you know, kind of what they, what the reaction to the report is. Would that make sense? I, I didn't see the the overview of the report, so I don't know. There is nothing. If that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, that might, that makes sense. Um, yeah, because we have the the other one scheduled. I think we're going to record that next week for the maintainers report, and then maybe maybe in a few weeks, once people have had time to digest with these reports, then maybe since these are more um, European focused, maybe we collect multiple reports and talk about them in the same podcast and do it maybe from a university perspective. Okay, that'd be cool. Um, yeah. All right. So it was just one of the thoughts that came out. And then um, listening to people talk, it sounds like there's a bunch of kind of different interests. And I think this is a challenge that I could use help with. So it does seem like there's university open source. It, there does seem like there's scientific open source and there's public sector open source. And if we're, we're all going to work together, I don't, part of me has a challenge in disambiguating these three sometimes or bringing them all together or anyway it just it seems like a real challenge for us and and i don't know if people have thoughts on this at all or if i'm making any if this is a comment that's even worth making a comment on i you know you had a you know we had a report a year ago I can't hear who's talking yeah. real well. Right. There we go. Sachiko was just. I'm sorry. Oh, you're saying that we also thought about that because you are, you know, in Yuan's report that he's doing for the European Commission. So, sort of what, what sort of, um, he's talking about non industry, non industry open source, non industry OSPOs. Um, and then what do we include there? Uh, yeah. And I guess, you know, that's how we, you know, Yuan came up with some sort of. You know, is the the we're including everything that we see that is not industry, uh, and then mm -hmm. including the for sort of university or schools, um, ones that are sort of um, public sector uh, or schools, but also some kind of not for profit uh, civil society type organizations. So. It's, uh, it's, 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 um, I mean, I'm not, I'm not academic also can be both private and, and public. We've been looking at two public cases. Um, I mean, I, I think the same archetype or architecture can apply to both, uh, some terms. And looking at Trinity College Dublin, they are mostly focused on technology transfer, while the, the Leroy, uh, case is mostly focused on promoting, um, use and uh, develop and, uh, open, open source practices by researchers when disseminating uh, through the research and other research process. Um, none of the cases really highlighted the aspects of open source in education, in the higher education field. Um, but I, I, we, have, we have one note that we should bear, look quite closely at the American or the US context that has going a bit further where there are maybe other angles. So the technology transfer track of using the open source is bit in business models and you know, startups sprung out of the union context can be one aspect and providing advice on that. And the other aspect through Lero is how can researchers collaborate and disseminate the results on as open source from the grant stage the application stage to the actual research and the maintenance of the project ends stage. But there are so many more facets to it, but I think so you, you can probably talk more about yeah no I, I, I couldn't agree more. Um and Matt I first I'll complicate the question even more by saying research software. You have another lens that you can bring to this. Um, but this, this is not a fully close spot, so apologies in advance. But uh, Claire, Claire and I had a conversation some time ago um, about patterns. 
And one, one thing I'll put out there is there's different lenses that you can use. One is an organization like the university, something like the government entity, so on. Um, another is sort of the, the function, right? Is, is this software being used to advance science? Is it being used to teach? So on, to be in the university context. But then there's there's also the sort of workflow, right? How does this impact a faculty member at the university from the workflow perspective? Versus concern, like a government employee who's doing research on something. Those workflows are probably not exactly the same, right? Because we, we, we joked about this. This also came up in the problems. Is every conversation I have in the university, the solution for your problems, and they're all end with, but oh, we're not going to tell the faculty what to do. Um, that That is unique in some ways to the university context, right? And that has profound implications on what works for the faculty members. Follow because we can't say you have to choose this particular license. That's simply not practical. We can say we recommend these licenses, and you can choose those licenses to bounce you one fact of confidence and so on. So I, I think there's a different kind of layer in terms of looking at patterns across how these different organizations and different functions um, you know, manifest themselves in one world. So that, that's one thing I'm thinking about a lot. To try and you're absolutely right. If you keep talking about how all those things fit on the Venn diagram, that'll take a while. Um, but we might get further by sort of real need to. So here's a persona and here's a function and here's a workflow that I'll I'd, I'd like to add to that based on the conversation that we had in the last two working groups around the, the plan to dig deeper on the questions we would ask, the goals, the questions. And I think it was in last um the last call two weeks ago where, where there was a discussion around the idea that when we think about questions, we need to be very explicit about who might be asking those questions. And I think even just outlining a group of questions, even if we're not covering the complete space, we'll get very quickly to here, here are questions that need to be answered that are not being answered anywhere else. And so I, I don't know if it's going to be possible to map the complete space and all of the intersecting points between research software, open science, open software, and all the rest of it. But at least if we get to questions that are out there that we know are out there right now and um, that are not being answered, we, we, we would have a starting point without trying to map the world first. I'm dumping a bunch of stuff into the chat <clears throat> so I don't take all the air in the room. Some of you have heard me say this stuff before. It's new to others of you. Do you want to give an overview of what you've been dumping into the chat, Stephen? Stephen, can't see the chat. Stephen, uh, universities have multiple use cases depending on staff, faculty, students, what the rights cases, the ownership cases, the funding cases are in each place. Right, faculty get to straddle the line on policy depending on what is defined by their funders or their profession. Students may or may not own their IP. Staff have to do whatever the university policy is in theory. Um, the university context has the standard industry OSPO context of managing software IP and the larger context in at least some of these organizations in terms of open science, open scholarship, et cetera, writ large, which are different than the traditional software work done in and out of OSPOs that are software focused. Yeah, I, let me add, add to that, excuse me, that's a really good point. Um, I went through a session about best practices around AI assisted code, generated profile of code risk and so on. And it was a really good presentation. Um, and at one point he said, I'm giving you a very short, simple version of it. it was just make sure that there are human edits and human contributions, and that will give you some copyright around it. If you just take the AI system code and cut and paste it, it's not as, as clear. But to Stephen's point, that's different if you're a faculty member, a staff person, or a student, right? Staff, staff person could go and make the edits, but the university might still own the IP, which they wouldn't do for a faculty or typically for a student most on the plan. So this is what I mean about the university having these sort of peculiar nuances and peculiar workflows that from a very recommendation, right? Go in and sort of make these human contributions so you can assert copyright. Suddenly bifurcates it. 
Right. And so, for example, as a faculty member, if I have done some software or other stuff, but we'll talk about software for a second. If I've done software that I want to release openly, if there is no policy on that, generally I have to write a letter to my tech transfer office and or my vice president of research where I make the case that there is not enough revenue generated by them by this or they make the case that there is where if they decide they're not going to make enough money out of what I've done then they will write me a letter that says they give up their copyright so that I can distribute it I think that matches your experience Saeed or do you want to expand on that um, so, sorry, just to make it even more complicated. <laughs> Please do. That, that's not true, Carnegie Mellon. A faculty member does not have to do that. A faculty member, I've heard, and this would be required, but I, I, I've heard from our tech credit office that they literally are contacted at the very end of a process where a company says, here's the agreement, faculty member has signed it, and we want you to sign it. And they say, we have no idea what you're talking about. What project is this? What faculty member is on? So, yeah, and, and, as a much more loose framework, around, faculty members can engage directly with companies. We we have Johan has had had indication. Do you want to say something there as well? Yeah, uh, no, speaking speaking from the context of uh, Rice as a research institute, so we have I would say multiple use cases. I mean, one one use case is the researcher wanting to. <laughs> release supplement, uh, supplementary material or software software outputs from, from a research project. I mean, that, that's one use case. Um, another use case is um, uh, in, in, a, in a research collaboration, uh, either because they, they grant application, uh, for example, Horizon, the Horizon requires the development to be open source, or that they want to have some kind of ongoing collaboration with it. The, the different research partners. But I mean, typically right now, the, um, the questions internally that, that we're supporting is, okay, so now we've finished the research project. Now we want to, uh, to release it as, as open source, and that can be just to, to enable others to, to use it. But it can also be from our perspective or their institution's perspective, able to uh, create some kind of business model for us. Uh, we create a service around it. So, I mean, us as a research institute, we have multiple use cases for engagement. So I just dumped our best practices doc from our website in it, which is kind of an illustration of trying to dance around some of this stuff within the context of my university, perhaps having this group do something like this around, you know, in, in this case, you know, at this university, this is what happens at this research institute, this is what happens because what, what people seem to need or ask for a lot is examples that they can mold to their own context, right? So we've had this published on our website for about two, two and a half years. Um, and it's not the be all and end all, I've got a new new director of IP at my university that may mean that I have to change all of this. But I think because I think just putting up how we do stuff under this contact in our place is a start to try to get those personas and use cases kind of bubbled up from what each of us has to deal with might be a good place to start. So since none of us have access to the chat, can somebody drop those links into the meeting docs? Do we have access to those later? Because we're we're in a room, so we don't see the chat, Stephen. But but yeah, but I think uh, they typically do put the put the links from the chat into the meeting doc. Or yes. might might we be able to do that? Do they? Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> That's an explicit request. Yeah, if you if you wouldn't mind. Thank you. We appreciate it. Um, thank you. And and Chan had had a, another point right. to. Add. I don't think we had a meeting doc, did we? I thought we decided not to have one. Oh, okay. Or well, then maybe the Slack even then. Slack, yeah. I think, yeah. Right. Or, or you can just stick it into the meeting doc as a kind of a, here is the chat. After effect, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I have a couple of follow-up questions here then. 
And I'm gonna go uh, yeah, hang on a minute, Matt. Sorry, we had just one more comment from the room here, if you don't mind. And then, yep, yeah, that's okay. No, go on. Thank you. Um, and just hearing um, Johan say you speak, it's um, so my background is um, I, I came from academics as well as from the University of Colorado and prior to that, the University of Pennsylvania. Uh, but and now I'm in an industry, but hearing you both speak, it's not much different than industry also. Um, the skeleton is, is pretty much the same. We, we're just dealing with different stakeholders. Your tech transfer is technically at Costco. Um, they have to still go through us to make sure it's okay. Um, and I think that there is a lot of um, opportunity to, to, to allow those best practices to um, um, used in academics and just, I think it might just be a matter of um, uh, changing who those stakeholders are and how to approach um, maybe some of the, I don't want to say, maybe some of the politics or maybe some of the, the culture. The culture is definitely different, um, but I would say that um, we, we can't force our developers to do what we say here. Um, it's recommended, their guidelines, their best practices. Um, they ultimately make the decision. And if they want similarly to insist that you that they end up going to sign something and come back to the company and say, hey, we signed it, it's kind of you deal with it too. So we have a lot of similar use cases. And I can just be able to share that um, might, might be helpful. That, that wording seems to be very like specific, I suppose, and sometimes it is just that translation in yeah. terms of the context. Um, Matt, Matt, you can go ahead now. Uh, one, one thing I would say is that knowing that there's usually a hard stop with the chaos meetings as well, can, can, we, um, can we make sure that if we could give a, a view into the model that you had created and the, and the doc with the questions or something, just so folks here can see that? Um, to show where, where, where your thinking was going as well as, I, I don't know if you can get that in with your questions, hopefully you can, <laughs> before you have to leave. Is that, um, is there a projector where people could see something that yeah, makes yeah. shares? Oh, we're, 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 we see all of you. We're, we're looking at you on the big screen. We okay. just can't. Okay, all right. I was just wanted to check that before Matt yeah, started yeah. sharing also, something. Yeah. Otherwise we'd be squinting. You'd see a lot of squinting yeah. going. Oh no, yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Yes, so I can, um, I'll ask my question first. I'll just make it one question and then, uh, yeah, Claire, I'm happy to share that. So um, I like, I, this is a really interesting conversation. Um, Saeed, a while when you were talking, you had mentioned that there might be a couple of different ways to organize this work um, in an effort to accommodate kind of these different groups that we have. So whether they're scientific software, research software, um, universities, whatever it might be. And you you had, I, I don't know that I got it properly, but you said there may be ways to organize around workflow. There may be ways to organize around the different types of organizations and where they overlap. And then there was a third as well. Do you remember what you were? Could you say that again? Yeah, uh, I hope so. Uh, <laughs> I mean, what, what I was getting at is the different lenses. One is the organization type, which is where we tend to naturally sort of go. Uh, get that. Okay. Uh, another is sort of the function or the purpose of why you're doing the work. It's like research in the university, it's like education. And then the third is the work most associated. Okay. Plus okay. one, Saeed. What's that, Stephen? Plus one. He said plus one. Oh, okay. Agreement. So are these are well, these, these are they different from one another? Are these different lenses or are they like layers to you? Like is it just are they all exclusive from one another? No, I don't think they're exclusive exclusive at all. I think there's eddies and currents and they sort of go around together. Um, but in terms of thinking about how to differentiate, right? So I it's encouraging to hear that's helpful and because I've never been Pathetic. I'd love to learn more about it. You know, one thing I'll add is, like, for example, there's. So I think this is true at a university. I, I don't want people to want to go to the front anymore. But faculty can release without any review. They're putting stuff on GitHub all the time. They can right? do that in there. So there's, there's then the question of 
the university is probably has a different liability structure. Right. So, so that's what I mean. That that's a useful thing to talk about from an organizational perspective. It's very different if you're a faculty member versus But it sounds like the workflows are actually similar. I can imagine. That's what I'm getting. At. Okay. The organizations seem very different. There's probably some level at which you look at the workflow. About that, but I think it's okay. <clears throat> I think, okay, yeah, go ahead, Sean. I, I mean, I think th if I'm hearing, and I'm not always hearing everything that's getting said, but I think what, what I'm hearing is what was something similar to what I've observed across government, uh, scientific, and university OSPO kinds of work. That the one of the big differences is the co who, who the contributors are, the, the who of contribution, I think, is what is most distinct across those domains. So in at a university, you know, the, the work that Stephen's done with open work in general, I think the contributors, you know, we're trying to kind of focused on the faculty. When it comes to scientific open source, I think some of the contributors come from universities landscapes, but also come from other places. And in government, the the biggest difference, it's a very significant difference. Most of the contributions come from government contractors. So the, the nature of who the contributors are is what I've observed is is a point of distinction, perhaps not the only one. So another distinction that 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 I've noted from some of the conversations we've had is the temporal nature from a university perspective. So the mm. the, the the time element, for example, for student projects, which may only hope happen in term time and may finish after they, they graduate for yeah. a researcher when the funding dries up. They're very, very different than in other types of open source projects, which may, for example, from the get go for for a government thing, have a longer term time frame that by you know and, and be intended to last for longer. So that that the time aspect seems to be different in the different contexts too. Mm -hmm. um, so Claire, I put this up yeah, on the you, screen. Do you yeah, would would you mind maximizing your screen to, to go into presentation mode, please? And I'll just turn off this. Like it's definitely bigger yeah thank okay you. working well okay all good claire yeah work away go okay go so just um this is what we've been working on uh in the university context group so essentially what we're doing in the, the chaos project is developing different context groups where people can speak openly and freely about the the things they would like to get better insight on without having to be deeply involved in the chaos project to say develop metrics or develop metrics models to get at these particular things you know the whole publication process that we do in chaos to publish metrics um, Chan, for example, you've seen this in the in the corporate OSPO side as well. I'm using a very similar or similar <laughs> identically structured framework with different words. And so to your point, Saeed, um, we've been trying to find we've been working on functions in kind of from a, a function perspective. And listening to this conversation, I, my guess is it's, it'll be important for us to find points of overlap, not necessarily differentiation, because from that overlap, we could potentially produce something like what Stephen had proposed as a best practice guide that we want to find those, that Venn diagram where, where we have some overlap somewhere. And Saeed, I was going to ask that question, like where of those three different ways of three different lenses where we might have the best overlap in the Venn diagrams. I'm not sure that I, I know that. Um, but we've just kind of taken the function approach, I think, of the three that you have mentioned here without really thinking about these other groups uh, too, too intently, I don't think. Um, so the way that this works is, is we in the Chaos Project develop metrics, and we don't want to develop metrics just for metrics sake, because if you're metrics first, that ends up really muddying a conversation often, and people get really hung up on kind of these low level metrics or these atomic metrics when you're really not sure what what you're actually addressing. So um, going back to a conversation that I still remember that I had with Daniel in California, where he kind of introduced the goal question metric approach. Uh, 
which was really enlightening to me. This is very early on in the chaos project. We're following the same approach here around functions. So you can see across the top, we have a series of, of functions uh, at the university, uh, at the university setting. So these are things like I care about research excellence. I care about research translation. I care about education. So these are kind of different functions that I might care about within a university. And there may be what I heard similar functions that may exist in in different contexts or in, in these different domains. So I, I think one I was hearing today was research translation or at least translation of some sort. And so from here below are the, the goals. So from a research excellence perspective, we may have the goal of improving research reproducibility and replicability. Or from an education perspective, we may have a goal of identifying a, the curriculum that's, that's using open source software. So there, this a, a model like this can certainly get wider. It can get, uh, and it can also get deeper. So this is just a start of, of where we're going. And so then if I was to say research excellence, so if I was to kind of look at this bottom left corner, which is correlate open source activity with research funding, as an example, it's only then that we kind of build questions that can help us gain a better handle on that particular goal. So that's something that we want to achieve, and it's under the function of research excellence. And here are a series of perhaps three questions that could help gain better insight on that goal. These, these are not the complete set of questions. They're probably more. Uh, these questions won't answer that or address that goal perfectly, but they help kind of move the conversation forward. Only after we're comfortable with the questions in terms of supporting the goal, would we use existing chaos metrics and metric models, metric models just being collections of metrics, or we would need to develop new metrics and or metrics models to help answer that particular question to achieve that particular goal in support of that particular function. So this is the, the approach that we're using and we have been using and kind of developing over some time. We've actually kind of built this out a little bit where we're starting to, to ask questions like where we would actually get some data to answer some of these questions and how this information could be used. But that's maybe a, a different conversation. So this is the approach that we're taking. And I think the hope would be is that we could include all groups here and try to find where those functional overlaps could be, maybe, maybe not. Um, and then one last comment before I, I'll, I'll stop is that th this is not meant to be a maturity model in any form. So there are, as I heard the conversation too, there are a lot of different groups who want to achieve very different goals or they have very different functions that they're trying to address. And by no means should this be read as if you achieve all of these goals, you're in a better state than if you only achieve two of those goals. Because it, it may be such that achieving those two goals is, is exactly where you need to be as an organization. So this is what we're working on. And we'd love to have you join our conversation <laughs> as to how do we think about these functions? How do we think about these goals? How do we think about the related questions and data and then the development of metrics? And as you're invited to this conversation, please know that, again, these context groups, it's meant so that you can just talk openly and say anything you want. And we try to capture that and document it for you in the chaos project. So when Yiga had in introduced herself earlier as the liaison, Yiga is here to, to help kind of in that translation process of kind of the conversations that would occur here and then actually producing the software and the artifacts that would help others. So that's it. Hopefully that made sense. It's a quick overview. I'll stop my share. Thank, thank you, Matt. That was, I think that was, that was great. And and just to, to, to say that I, I confirmed that I'll be sharing the links to that document and all the Slack groups and communication channels that we've talked about here today to everyone that's here today. So I'll be able to, people will be able to check that out in more detail at their leisure. Let me also, I'll say one thing, Jen is also here to help as a liaison. So thanks Jen and Yiga. Thank you all. No. <laughs>
Um, so any, any questions on that from here, from folks that haven't seen that? Something, something I would like to mention from what Mark said is about how um, the organization is trying not to look at metrics first. Is something that we have been reading quite a bit in my work. Oh, sorry, we're hearing typing. Someone, whoever's typing. Uh, but um, something we have been doing at our organization, which is called the tyranny of metrics. Yeah. Um, oh, book. Everyone's reading the book. Yeah, Chaos the must be very nervous about it. <laughs> no. Think about it. Like, it's turned out to be it just started from metrics. Yeah. And if humans start thinking metrics first, it goes nowhere. So it's good that um, there's a thought behind, thought already in the background that we are not looking at metrics first and looking at humans and you know taking empathetic decisions first. And then metrics are there for support and not. Yep. That's that's been a central aspect of the chaos community from the very beginning that we will not be driven around by the metrics themselves that they have to connect to some goal that we care about. So thank you for that comment. And I have I have not read the book yet. Have you read the book? I haven't. Which book is this? The tyranny of metrics. Oh yeah, yeah. I read that book. Yeah, we just got it. Yeah, I'm about I mean, that right now that's my plane reading uh, <laughs> I, I read that book very early in the chaos project it is a very good book because um <laughs> the first time that i got to know about it our finance director was actually doing a presentation on it and he didn't read the book he was doing his own presentation oh, he's just calling it and that said, like, yeah, it's, it's a book yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. ideas whose time have gone and anything else? Well, this, Any yeah, Claire, if you oh, could. Chan uh, loved this. <laughs> if, you, if you didn't hear that, Chan was just saying she loved your metric model. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's been pretty useful to help kind of um, support conversation that we have. And it, it's honestly what you saw there is built from our conversations, not from folks in the chaos project. It's like these are and same with the one in the corporate os we have a similar model in the corporate ospo working group or context group and it's built through conversations there and steven i'm thinking maybe something like that you know those could be if we could identify a series of functions that could serve maybe as a best practice approach at least to get people to think about particular functions that might be useful in their in their particular context so yeah it makes sense to me okay right on um so we'd love to have you join, Claire, if you could share the meeting details or just show them to people who may want to join the call that'll again, I guess it's right at this time in two weeks on the yeah. same channel. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. um, just so other people know too, I've, I have, I've been getting some positive feedback because, you know, Sloan has supported, I think, six more university OSPOs as well. Um, and so I think, I think some folks are going to be joining here in the in the near future uh, from that new set of of OSPOs as well. So I'm pretty excited about that. Yay! And we'll, yep. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Well, this is thanks for organizing this. This was nice great. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet everybody that I hadn't seen in a while. And uh, enjoy your wine. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. We're we're, send, we're sending you vibes of wine, vi well, happy wine, wine vibes. vibes from Bilbao. <laughs> it's only it's only nine minutes till it's noon here. Yes, exactly. <laughs> wine o'clock. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Bye. Everyone. Thank you. Take care.